earlier. If you look, this is tat soft, and it has a very familiar look with what Michael showed. But with this, we needed the pumps because they are fixed assets carrying, covering a wide uh, geographical area. We needed very specific ways to sort the information. Everybody wanted to look at it a little bit differently. So here, we were able to do it by whether a pump is running, by its stop. I can sort it by region, by field, by operator, by foreman, or whatever. We're going to look here into our first page, which is our Esri maps, where we have some of the ESPs loaded. We can very quickly look to see which ones are running or not. We can also, we have Doppler radar loaded inside of this because these drives are very, very sensitive to electrical outbursts such as lightning, boom. We can put descriptions on to the Esri maps as well so that people who are maybe not as familiar with them, they can see what it is. We have what's called our quick charts. If you ever see a problem with one, you can click on it and you can see very quickly if there's an issue or if there's not an issue. With this, we're gonna go into our dashboard which is our people take a quicker look at what's going on, a more in-depth look. We can set pins. We have a set of default pins. Remember I said if we could get the six pins to begin with, we're good. This is what we've morphed into. They can make selections on the pins themselves. They can scroll through in time. They can see what's going on. They can add annotations. They can add the annotations directly to the tag that they're looking at or to the well comprehensively. Then, if you have a well that you look at beyond the default and you want to add other tags, as you can see, we can create a custom group in here. So every time you go back in, you don't have to reset your pins. It's set to your ID. We can expand the screen so we can actually see the data elements that we're working with. Some things such as pump vibration is a very noisy signal because you have a pump 18,000 feet below ground it's, it's susceptible to a lot of vibration. We can tone down the signal a little bit, is what we just did. We can do that on the fly, as you'll see. So here we are adding a few more pins, and it's just that quick. You can see on the scroll bar, the values are associated with the pins also as you move across where people like to look what it is. We can change the axes on the fly. This is a great feature right here. You take a look at it and you say, what I have here, I need to some, send to somebody who knows what this means. I sent, take a picture and I just sent them an email containing that chart. I can also send the data points, their values, numericals as a CSV to anybody I want to. So I want to send it to a pump manufacturer or to my SME or to an engineer, I just did so with a couple of clicks of the button. If you'll notice, I talk, there's annotations there, the annotations that were created. So the annotations are a marker if an event occurred. We also database all of the annotations as well. If you'll notice, they're color-coded. Supervisory is yellow. Automation is blue. Engineering would be green. Field automation is another color, so forth and so on. And we can define whatever colors. That way you can see, was it maintenance that wrote the ticket? or the annotation, was it an engineer, who was it? Here we're going to our overview screen. This just gives us a quick analysis of the pump and the conditions they're in. And if you'll look, we're in a, we use a green, yellow, red status. And if you, we mouse over, we get the actual value of the tag itself. Those are also clickable. You can click on the well and it'll take you directly to the uh, process screen that you saw just a few minutes ago. This is our detail screen that we have. It has every value associated with that ESP and that well. And also, all of the values in, in, that you'll see inside of there are historized. So we could click on the values, and we could create a pop-up trend of history for as far back as we want to go. Downtime is important for these pumps. So we want to look at the pumps themselves and say, are they up, are they down? What percent? Am I having trouble with this particular manufacturer? Am I having trouble with this particular well? I can narrow in on that. I can also look by the field itself and say, what is my field uptime? What is my field downtime? A couple of things you may have noticed on here was power failure. What we found out in our quick analysis was the fact that the power company was sending us really dirty power. We were having significant issues in a couple of locations. We were actually able to go back to the power guy and say, clean it up, help us out. You're causing problems. This is our pump scurve screen, screen, and we've toned it down a little bit because, quite honestly, I don't want to show everything. Certain things need to be kept a secret between us girls, right? So, but we do can create on-the-fly calculations for our pump curves. We can see 
Are we or are we not inside of the curve in our operations? A lot of those are calculated fields that we do every time we get a new value from the pie system. Here's a quick view of the wells that someone may want to look at. We can again sort this by region, by field, by area, multi ways to sort and view. And it has a lot of the same features that you'd see on the other screens. Here, uh, we're also going to our uh, field dashboard. We can, we can take pictures there as well, where you can create a custom set of wells. We may have a SME or a mechanic who is not assigned to a specific spot or a specific area. He may be all over the place. We'll say he has a certain set of wells. They could be new and he's really wanting to babysit them. They could be a trouble well. He can create his own custom list box there of the wells that he wants to uh, keep an eye on. And he does that with a click of a mouse. You saw the check box up there. That's all he has to do. And every time that we come back into the system, the same wells are set there until he makes a change into them, remembers who he is. So that was our, that was our two months worth of work getting to where we are on this. And I think, I think we've gone a long way. I think it's also of note that when we were doing this and we had our testers, the engineers, the maintenance guys, every time we put out a new release, they would sit in their desk and they'd go through it and see if we had any bugs, see if we had issues, see if we had components that were not interacting correctly. And what we found was on more than one occasion, we had seven well saves from them just being able to look at the data and know what it is, zoom in, put it in the proper context, and see what's going on. So we had seven wells that were headed south on us, and just during the testing phase, we got those saves, which is a big, big thing for us to do. And it also preaches to the validity of what we're trying to do here.